Look at you. <laughs> You're hiding in some sort of a semi dark space. Do you want to, oh no, that's oh, put on some light, light. Everybody wants to There see. Oh, yeah, you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us on another Instagram live conversation a series that we started at Zeitsmoka like six or seven weeks ago. I am extremely excited and delighted to, to have this conversation with someone that has a very, very special place in my heart and in my practice and uh, was extremely rare on social media, at least on this platform, is uh, the incredible Tracy Rose. Hello, Tracy. Oh, hello, Sidat. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you broke my fast, so I think I'm now going to be like hooked onto Instagram. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a kind of a platform. I'm kind of surprised that you're not on it because it's a, it's some some natural works. I mean, naturally for your practice, it will be good, but you're totally hooked on Facebook, I know. So, um, yeah. How are you, my dear? It's so wonderful to see you. Yeah, likewise. Mm. <laughs> good. Everything good. Just slightly nervous. I haven't done this before. So, yeah, speaking to a, a live audience in live time. Don't uh, be nervous. It's going to be wonderful. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I want you to, I just want you to ask you, I think we are all going through uh, this uh, incredible time. We have to adjust to a new life. How are you doing? Um, I don't know, it's kind of surreal, you know, it's not a, it's, it's, a, 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 but, but I'm kind of happy for the break, mm -hmm. you know, it's, there's no jumping on planes and, and rowing with people in different parts of the planet. It's just staying home and introspecting and working from here. I'm actually, I'm, I feel like an artist in residence, actually. <laughs> artist in residence at home. <laughs> That's your oh, concept. Great. <laughs> Being resident at your <laughs> own residence. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I'm having to go for visas. Yeah. Exchange rates. I'm home. I'm happy. I'm home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In spite of everything. In spite of all the madness. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the madness. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it was it was funny. I had a, a a tarot reading at the begin at the end of last year in December, and I was told things are going to go well. You don't have to make too much effort. No tragedies. No trauma. And it's like, oh, <laughs> you didn't predict this part, right? So, I don't know. It's kind of it, it's it, sort of being in this in this in 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 the space and trying to sort of make sense of it. And and uh, I mean, I don't. I, I don't think I can kind of philosophize in, in a way that's informed without, without being emotional about it, but to, you know, but um, I think it's a sort of a long time coming. Uh, sort of one of the many kind of theories I've been looking at for, um, for the past while is, um, but actually it's not really one that I looked at. It's kind of one that found me, I suppose. Um, I, I was talking to a, a friend who's who's a healer, and and she was saying that there's a an imbalance, and um, that has to be rectified, and this is going to happen within this 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 time frame. So 2020, you know, you know, it's it's it's, it's about redressing the balance. But she was talking about it being an imbalance between the divine masculine and the and the divine feminine, mm -hmm. and uh, primarily from like an uh, um, sort of like an African perspective, I, 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 I would say going sort of going back uh, all the way to past sort of ancient Kemet and you know to, to a space where uh, women were divine and were de deified and uh, they were overthrown by the priest class. So mm -hmm. you know that's when the vilification of the female starts and mm -hmm. they start to take over. Um, what is essentially the the sort of sacred space of creation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the magical space, and uh, and you know, and, and you know, 
kind of uh, enforcing their their their, their guard, their 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 order, um, uh, and asserting their their, their 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 position and their dominance, and um, and and that is sort of the theory that kind of makes the most sense mm-hmm. to me on 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 bad days. Um, you know, not having to look at the sort of social political kind of realities, which you know, which I kind of wrote they're like every day, and, and and you know that you 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 can pass commentary on that. You know, you know, as a, as a, as a creative practitioner, a cultural practitioner, you can say things, but you can't fundamentally change them. Mm-hmm. So, what is the other kind of vehicles or spaces? that one can go to in order to, to, to articulate this or insert something into it that kind of disrupts this mega narrative, you know, without kind of saying the same thing, you know, because I think, you know, I feel like I'm being placed in, in, a, in a particular time and space in, 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 in this history, this historical narrative that I'm aware of. Mm. All the others I, I, I'm amnesic about, but like the, um, uh, the, the kind of journey that I've been on in, in, in terms of trying to just kind of make sense of all of this is being to, to alternative spaces sort of beyond the main, mainstream and, the, and the, the kind of theories that are pushed us mm. locked into these very secure sort of frameworks of understanding, mm. you know, so-called logic. And none of this reality is, is logical, mm. you know, it's a system designed by... It's very, this time, it's sh- not only showing us the limits of kind of what we take for granted, so to speak, but also the limits of the institution. And the institution as, of course, as a a political body, as a government, as the idea of the nation state, institution as a, as a, as a, as a, uh, how do you, um, uh, dominating kind of dogma, like patriarchy, is a kind of dogma, and uh, and the uh, no and uh, it's and your work has been I mean has been inspiring me as a curator for 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 the last twenty years in the way you maintain also uh, these imbalances, but also this very strong tension around you know what you call the the the, the sacred feminine. In a, in a very spiritual way. And I know that you go to really great lengths in your, in your performance work, particularly around your body and the way you really uh, work with your body as an artistic material. How do you feel these days? Am I, I, mean, I mean, what is going on around blackness, particularly in the US, around assaulted bodies and around, you know, uh, uh, this 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 sort of uh, 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 fixation on uh, on uh, on attacking black bodies. How do you feel about that? I mean, that's 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 been going on for for centuries. Yes, uh, but so I'm talking I'm talking okay. about the risk. Of course, we all know it's been going on since five hundred years. But we are again at a very uh, uh, heated point where. Uh, things are, are unraveling again. Yeah, but they're unraveling in a in a way that they haven't before. Yeah, you know. Um, and I think you know, of course, it's got to do with social media as as a as a method um, um, of disseminating information that wasn't available to you know to our to our ancestors, and mm. you know, let alone people you know two hundred oh. A uh, hundred years ago, or last century, uh, and um, I mean, it's just that, you know, I think this this sort of culmination of um, of this. I, I know it's quite. I I uh, again, you know, like my my sort of understanding of this changes like daily or minute by minute, um, mm-hmm. uh, and um, I was this earlier on, on how to how to articulate it. Um, if and when it comes up, uh, um, how, you know, sort of spiritual manifestations on this plane, but then mm-hmm. on in a very real way, of course, it's about our bodies. You know, it's a, you know, you can't kind of use these sort of new agey kind of cliches to kind of segue around that. And um, I was thinking, um, I, I had a, a, a discussion with well, one of my coworkers uh, earlier about this this term non-white, and I was saying to him, I can't I can't stand the term 
of people of color. I think it, mm-hmm. uh, I think it diminishes mm-hmm. um, so so much of the rage and the energy, mm-hmm. and um, you know, it kind of collectivizes. I'm, I'm very. I'm, I like to hear that because I have to, I have a problem with the term also. But let's talk. Let's talk further. We can talk about POC yeah. later. What's what you have against the term POC, and we can share. POC that. is actually profits of the city, just by what? the way. But um, POC prof- profits of the city. They uh, they're um, a hip hop group from Cape Town back in the uh, in the nineties. Ah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know about so, that. So that was number two. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll send you this stuff. Um, so. They also uh, so so yeah so so and I said to him like let's be clear like let's just let's just be honest mm-hmm. we're non-white <laughs> you know if we're gonna call out white supremacy let's call it out directly let's not like pretend that you know we we all simonier we like rainbow we like all happy in this collective of this this multi-colored I think I think even non-white doesn't really you know it's it's kind of include so many other people and 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 i really believe that uh uh the experience of blackness and particularly african blackness is or african heritage blackness is very very particular so uh it's uh it's uh it's i don't know i mm-hmm. i just i just believe that there are we 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 we, we, really, ca- need, we yes. really need to be the the more specific, you know, when we talk about black people, you know, be okay. them be so, them okay, black so, okay. people in in the in the Americas or black people on the continent. We really need to be extremely specific because all okay. these terms are lumping terms. I don't know. If Uh, uh, throwing everything term because uh, 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 people of color can be anyone that is exactly non-white and not necessarily African or African American or African descent. So if you if you want, you know. Okay. So so let me so, so wait, wait 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 wait. Let, let me let me say something. <laughs> so what I want to say is that so firstly, if we say that, okay, so it, it, it's a direct challenge towards whiteness. Mm-hmm. I feel. You know, it's, it's very clear. If you're not white, you're non-white. Mm-hmm. That's the clarification. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when it comes to speaking specifically about the African experience, the the black African experience in America, the you know, like you know, it's a the, these are these are people who who were who were taken away and survived like the, the most horrific conditions. I mean, if if the truth comes out about what exactly happened, not just from The moment people were was were captured and uh, and transported and the explicit sort of romanticization about people with with chains oh it was it was it was horrific it was absolutely horrific mm. and then you know put onto I don't uh, put into onto, onto ships where um you know they were transported and 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 then they were just you know the uh, the the amount of abuse I mean the, the levels of abuse I don't even want to articulate yeah, yeah. um uh, articulate it in this, in this space but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, you know, and to, to still survive it, and mm-hmm. and and the the, the, uh, the enforced labor, um, and you uh, and you see of our global community, African Americans mm-hmm. have really shown us what uh, resilience means, you know, and what, it's, it's what beyond, yeah, but it's also way beyond, but yeah. it's way beyond resilience. Where it's 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 people that have actually transformed the entire mm-hmm. cultural um, makeup of the of the of the planet. I yeah, mean, it's just it's you know, and, and not, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So um, you know, and, and in part also kind of looking across the seas to to the space. I mean, I'm sure my reaction was similar to a lot of people's reactions. It was like, come home, and then I was like come back to Africa for, for what? Like, you know, Africa's in a, in a state of complete mess. Oh, one thing I wanted to tell you that, that I was thinking of as well was a friend of mine, uh, uh, Rick and the Morpha King was saying to me years ago, he was like, what do we do that was so bad? Like he, he, we were talking about the state of Africa and he was like, what do we do that was so bad that this is the karmic payback? And it's, it's something that I was, I was thinking about in my mind. And then I, 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 I did a, 
I think it was one of the ayahuasca journeys I went on. And so what happens also with ayahuasca when you go on it, it's not just the intensity of that moment. The medicine still stays in your body. So you're still kind of processing things. Mm. And um, one of the things that sort of came up was that um, the sellers remained. Mm -hmm. And that means that the people, the African people who were selling their fellow African people um, well, remained on the continent. Well, I, and so wait, wait, no, wait, wait, just <laughs> indulge me, indulge me, indul indulge me, indulge me. Okay. So, you know, and, and this is what's like, no, wait, wait, because, because it's, 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 you know, you know, we can argue about what karma is. I mean, I, I, I believe it exists. Um, but, um, I, it was just, it was kind of like an interesting point of just saying, you know, we, we also just so decimated. I mean, the people that were, that were taken, they weren't slaves. They were, they were doctors, they were teachers, they were bakers, they were builders. You know, um, you said it was like the first brain drain of the yeah, continent, I right? Yeah, I say that um, slavery was the yeah. first mega brain drain ever. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and then, but, but it wasn't only, only that. I mean, what I'm kind of also interested in is this, this space where I feel like, um, you know, um, I don't know really how to articulate it because it, it it came up in a in a in a reading I had with 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 uh, with with some with, with some other healers and and they were saying oh you know my father's side my my grandfather's from Mauritius and we could never figure out like how they got there or how you know how they managed to and, and he was nine years old when he came back to uh, he came back to South Africa well he came to South Africa with his, um, his father and his sister. We don't know what happened to his mom. And so it turns out that um, his ancestry were from the Mozambican uh, side of, of the East Coast, right? Mm -hmm. And they were sold into slavery. Mm -hmm. Their narrative is never spoken about, you know, how, you know, Africans ended up in, in the Middle East um, because of, a, it's almost this taboo to Slave trading going on, on all coasts, you know, and I mean, when you say that uh, the Indian Ocean trade is is very under under research mm -hmm. and under spoken about, and the whole Trans-Saharan uh, trade is also under under spoken. But uh, I I think that uh, before we 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 totally digress uh, uh, into yeah. that. Um, I really, I really would like to to hear from you. We were supposed to uh, to have uh, uh, your first uh, major survey. We move between survey and retrospective. What do you prefer, retrospective? I, I, I think call I think it, survey. I think uh, survey. Yeah, I think retrospective. retrospective. I think I'm I call it, it, it mid-career retrospective of uh, yeah, yeah, that's of, of your work yeah. at uh, at the museum now, and uh, due to mm. the pandemic, of course. Uh, this is not happening. Um, what what do you how do you feel about it? I mean, we I I miss the fact that of course uh, we we couldn't open the show, but at the same time, I feel I also think that somehow uh, it provided us more space to you know to dig to dig more into certain aspect of the of the preparation of the show so how are you coping which is basically uh, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad this is the space that has allowed for a lot of refinement i think and also um i you know I, w when we emerge at the end of 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 this pandemic of uh, i think that uh, um, it's going to be a different world altogether. I, I thought it was quite um, ironic, though, that the title was Shooting Down Babylon, and it kind of feels like Babylon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> um, and, um, uh, hmm? Yeah, yeah. Somewhere. Um, I mean, art is was, was always that. I mean, I think that, you know, the, the relationship between the art... Uh, between, I, I say that uh, we have... The oldest galleries in the world. What? Yeah, we got. I said we have the oldest galleries in the world. We have paintings on cave walls. Yes. You know. Yes. I, you know, the you know the the art art is, is has always been part of of healing and mm -hmm. uh, uh, with its dance or singing or painting, it's you know it's it's been a it's it's a spiritual endeavor. It's not just a it's it's not just about the commodity. It's never been. It was never about the commodity of mm -hmm. it. It was about how do you how do you dance the demons away? How do you 
how do you heal yourself in that process? And, mm. and so I kind of feel like to, to sort of contemplate like the purpose of what art is in this space, mm-hmm. you know? Mm. Um, yeah. And I, yeah, yeah, because there's, there's got to be a, a, a mega shift. There's, it's got to be a seismic shift. And, you know, whether this is real or, or constructed, um, there's a space for um, an introspection that we, we've all kind of been handed that we wouldn't normally have Mm -hmm. and um uh i think it's 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 strange i think you said so earlier that there's there's a large white presence i think we always have to add that those of us who are privileged you know i think we we tend to forget and this this pandemic has really shown who has which privileges you know and uh, uh, when you talk about this time to have of introspection, of reflecting, and, you know, when things come up, you know, emerge mm-hmm. and, 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 and blow, uh, this, is, mm. this is given to, to, uh, to very privileged people because you, you know very well that many, many people on the continent, of course, don't have the luxury of uh, self-isolation and... Uh, and uh, and so on. So uh, and I and I believe I I hope that as you say that this moment really, which uh, revealed so many things for every country, you really had uh, all the all the, the 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 negativity and all the positivity. Anything that is positive in a in a country also came up. The way the whole thing is being handled. But I, I would like to come back. Uh, to uh, how it affects particularly artists, particularly, you know, uh, people who were having, uh, you know, big exhibitions coming and so on. So for for shooting down Babylon, shooting down Babylon over the last 25 years, or you've been shouting down Babylon over the last 25 years with all the, with, with your work, uh, what do you expect or what would you like uh, people who will see the show that will put up in a, co- in a few months, hopefully, as soon as we can reopen the museum? What are your expectations with that exhibition? Because you haven't done ma- major exhibition, you haven't done a solo in years and years and years, and... Uh, 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 what are your 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 expectation for for yourself first, and also what would you like to for visitors to go away with? It's kind of a. It's kind of a PR question. Like I, I, I've never made anything. But for, I am your professional for, for, for PR for twenty years, and I work for free. Come on, answer me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like no, but then, but but the impetus of 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 of, of making the work isn't mm-hmm. as as never been for 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 the audience. I don't, you know, it's a it's a it's it's a it's been a channel. I mean, uh, uh, for, for of course, there's the sort of criticality that kind of comes in sometimes you know, before, sometimes after, but, you know, with, with the sense of kind of presenting this, this lifetime body of work, mm-hmm. um, you know, for, for me, it's, there's, there's an element of closure. There's like, okay, I've said, I've said this, you know, and I can reflect on it and I can just enjoy mm. knowing that um, I've put these, these vibrations and these energies out into the into the world, and hopefully have affected some kind of of of, of positive change. And I, I'm I'm kind of fucking disappointed in myself that I, I I didn't foresee this and couldn't actually do anything about it. You know, every artist has a god complex. So I mean, like you know, I mean, like, you know, the current kind of state. You know, but we you know we all kind of make work in in in, in the with the illusion that somehow we're affecting change. You know, mm-hmm. and I um. And I, I, you know, I mean, that's that's an illusion that that kind of keeps us alive. I think mm-hmm. so. Um, you know, I, um, I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't really, really see outside of, of of this moment to 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 really reflect on 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 what I would expect from a singular audience experience in you know thirty years of work. Or, you know, but 
I want to, uh, um, I'd like to, to think that at, at some point each work would have some kind, of, or at least one work would have some kind of impact on even the sort of most hardened viewer, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, in whatever kind of way. I mean, I just, you know, the, the, the work in a sense doesn't also really come from, I make the work because it, it demands to be made. And so I'm just to, 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 to uh, ensure that, that that happens. And, um, and it's the same thing. It's the same kind of impetus. You know, it's like, you know, the the vision comes and it's like this work needs to be made. So how do I make it in by any kind of means necessary? You know, and it's and that's the the kind of element. I mean, what I really would like to do in, in a sense is just write about this, you know. Um I want to, you know, I'm interested in the relationship between shamanism and, and art and performance art, especially, mm-hmm. and how we kind of use our bodies even daily and unconsciously to perform out of, of various kind of personas. Mm-hmm. But um, um yeah, I can't I can't really you know, as I of course I, I want I want I want I want like to give that sort of to kind of mm-hmm. to, to to some sorts. But you know, I'm um I think the current reality is a huge kind of wake up. Maybe it's the precursor to 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 that. Maybe there's a catharsis that that can be also attained out of that, some kind of transformation. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, well, not entirely. I, well, I I don't necessarily think that what is happening now is a wake up. I think the 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 how do you call it the alarm clock has been ringing for a long long time we were just not listening or we were just pressing snooze if you want you know so uh uh and now it's a uh, it's a uh, it's another way to uh to listen and to uh and to live up to it you know uh but you mentioned something that is uh that uh that's really uh preoccupies me a lot because this is some this and it's about art making as a as a change uh, to make art for change you know as a uh, uh, agent of change so to speak and I I really wonder and I think it's an ideal moment to ask you as a uh, as an artist this question do you do you really believe that uh, artistic practice and particularly visual arts has this capacity to affect change I'm, I'm, I doubt it I've, so but I would like to hear your 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 position oh I did at one point I did I mean, you know in my naive 20s and my ideal 30s I, I honestly believe okay. that art could you know induce change change the world and yeah. then I I think, yeah, and then I became a mom and I was like, fucking reality check. No, nothing has changed. <laughs> you know, nothing can, you know, uh, all you, all you have is, is that which is around you, essentially. I mean, like, you know, it was a, you know, there's also this idea somehow that, 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 and I find it, it's a pressure that a lot of African artists get, mm. you, know, mm. you know, that somehow, you know, we've got to make work about these African issues, about mm. poverty and AIDS and mm. some, even up to today. Yeah, of course revolutionary post-apartheid radical and so on so i think yeah, it, yeah please yeah. go ahead so, no storm is saying art changed me and by extension others does that count yeah it does i mean it, you know obviously it changed, changed well, all of us and, i mean you know yeah, but i'm not uh, i'm talking about time, which I'm, not, I'm not talking about like yeah you know like we, we because also you know as as uh, as as pra- our practitioners within w- within this kind of space, and you know the last the turn of the last century of the of the last century, and, and to this point, it was like, you know, we were we were jumping off off and on planes and having exhibitions all over the world. Like that was completely unheard of. I was like twenty four, and I was um um it was like pre EU, so I had to apply for every country. I had to apply for a visa, and, you know, and get the the currency, and I would be the only person of see. That only non whites on the plane, <laughs> you know, back, back then, <laughs> and and that was like the nineties, you know, and that's economy class, um, and it's like if, you know now all of this has shifted so rapidly within the last uh, like uh, under thirty years, twenty years, and um, and uh, yeah, and then there was no internet, we had fax machines, and. Uh, there was like a really slow way to 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 communicate, mm. and 
uh, art was a struggle. I mean, you know, I, I look at all these amazing artists that were never given any platforms in this country. And, and that's, I'm just talking about this. I'm not talking globally. Mm-hmm. You know, when we were, we, when we would travel as African artists, we were never paid. We weren't given per diems. Mm-hmm. We were told we're giving you um, a plane ticket and a com- accommodation and, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I would buy a bag of apples and that's what I would eat like for lunch. You know, you go and you, you have your breakfast. You hope that you get breakfast in the morning and you you make additional sandwiches for the rest of the day but you're literally starving and so you've got to be like really thankful that a european or uh, institution because it's predominantly the european institutions that you mm-hmm. to do that um would um you know would, would exhibit your work and then there was also the understanding that you or, or there, there, there was kind of just just the whole entire art was just it's just full of decor mm-hmm. you know there's it's just and poses and I've, I've actually got I've lost a lot of interest in a lot of what I see and I remember when um the people that yeah that I was I was exhibiting with I mean we were uh we formed like really close close alliances and relationships because we we helped each other survive you know mm-hmm. Um, well, there yeah, is there is a lot today. going on in the feed mm-hmm. about what we started with about art as a as a change effect. I think I'm, I may have to clarify here when I say that I don't ne- I don't necessarily believe that art can really affect change as such. What I, on an individual basis, of course, but what I I, I believe that. Change in a society in a in a larger scale uh, never comes from one force. It's a it's a it's a concert of many forces that bring change about. You know, and uh, and yeah, but it's and, also, it's, uh, like ultimately, and, and, and it's, it's an economic let me decision. Finish quickly, <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. and I I I I, I am totally uh, a believer of the social value that art can build and 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 enforce in individual on on communities and so on but uh, mm-hmm. uh, for for political change for social change to really come in effect it needs a concert of many 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 participants and from various fields of human activity so art and i say it because uh, for for some reason you know um when when any blockbuster film, even not say block any film that is oh, made, no. well, you're not letting me talk. Let me, let me yeah, please let me ahead. let me say this. Okay, <laughs> because it's economics. It's mm-hmm. not just about like we don't you know we, you know this this idea. There's there's probably one true example I feel mm-hmm. where art uh, for me really uh, affected created effective change, and that was um, when um, oh god. Uh, if it Abrams, uh, her poem was read in, in to French Parliament, and that was that that kind that convinced the French to return um, the remains of Sarah Bartman back to South Africa. And mm-hmm. you know, I, I haven't I haven't heard of of a moment where an artistic gesture has has, has been that powerful because I don't think that you know the the people who are in power are actually that sensitive to it i think that art is, is is a lot a lot right now got to do with um economics mm-hmm. you know it's not you, it, you know that where, where it does affect changes in kind of these sort of micro communities where mm. you know there's these one on one relationships i know at the moment one of the reasons i'm 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 lecturing is because or teaching or disseminating knowledge is what i have what i do know is mm-hmm. that um um is that I can affect change in that kind of immediacy, mm-hmm. I, you know, and I can see it and it's visible. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know the, the entire resonance of, of, of what the work is going to do once it leaves my, you know, my vicinity and it, it goes and becomes whatever it needs to be. But I do know there's also a commodification that I've got mm-hmm. sort of no control over mm-hmm. um, that's possibly even more important than what I perceive as the intrinsic kind of ethical values or moral values of what it is that I'm, I'm I, I believe the work is doing, mm-hmm. you know, and, and i you know, and I think that there's also kind of a, a there's a, a imposed naivety by mm-hmm. the art, uh, the art system um, on, on, on artists, you know, mm-hmm. so that we believe in that romance. Mm-hmm. But I know artists who are starving all the time, mm-hmm. you know, but some people phone them up and ask them for a donation, you know, for, for an auction where they won't, they won't receive a penny, you know, to help others, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's, there's, 
and and you know and I think the it's it's a toxic system in in terms of the way that and it's not just it's not, because because ultimately it's like you know the, the gesture of 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 the artist it comes from nowhere mm. you know we 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 turn shit into gold mm. you know it's the it's the ultimate alchemy it's like you know there's no value in in um in anything that we create until it's until it's created it's you know once it's gifted to the world it it, it accrues a value that you can't you can't really um you 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 can't really um, put a, um, a a monetary kind of mark on, you know. It's but but it does. It, it, it accrues that in a, in another sort of system. But well, that system I, doesn't I, always. I, I that, strongly though. believe that. I mean, the social value that art creates, and your work particularly, has has really been expressing that and practicing that over over the 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 time uh, over the last twenty five years. So. Uh, I, I, I don't necessarily think that it's when you talk about the toxicity of the art system. Oh, yes, fair, fair. sorry, thanks. You know, no. uh, sorry. Yes, mm-hmm. of course, there it's toxic, but you know, it's also a choice to partake in the toxicity or not. You know, be you as a, as an artist, as a as an art professional, or even as an institution. You know, you can you can really. Uh, choose and guide your path and your journey in certain way that it protects you from anything that you don't want. Uh, and of course, sometimes it may have, uh, it may come at a price, but I think I'd say it because when I think, for instance, the, the entire always come back to Issa Sam, uh, uh, whose work, uh, in in a, in its deepest sense, was not necessarily about making objects, and whose artistic material in the throughout was time, and time and the human and so the social value that you can build as a human being in a society in a, any given environment. And this is why I think that the art the artist as a, as a social agent, you know. As a, as an activator, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, mm. and your work your work has done it uh, marvelously in a in a in a oh, very un- in a in a very uncompromising way, and 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 we've mm. spoken about it a lot, and that uncompromising I think that also created uh, not created participated in the in the quality and in the excellence of your work because you were not compromising about your work you are not compromising about who you work with you were not compromising about who you are as a as a as a as a black female person from an environment that is uh, is uh, is complicated and difficult you were not compromising about you know uh, uh, addressing the 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 issues and the and the and the and the ideas that you were you were having. So uh, I, I strongly believe that uh, it is important. It is possible to 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 draw your journey and your path in a way that does not participate in nonsense, you know, or in toxicity. So, mm. what do you think? I think that's romantic. <laughs> I mean, I of course, you can, romantic. you can say I'm not going to. No, but even the reaction, even the reaction towards the to not partake in 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 the toxicity is is still you know you're still marked by the toxicity. Mm-hmm. You know you're not you 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 know you, you because you be out of the gallery when I was with the Goodman the project closed down, and you know at that point I was also like in 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 that space where I'd be like. Um, I wouldn't be on this show because of, you know, whoever's on it. And I had, a, you know, a cute sort of just also arrogance mixed with, um, uh, you know, my, my, my righteousness within, within that space and, you know, and not wanting to uh, touch that toxicity in, in a sense mm-hmm. or kind of have some kind of standard about the, the spaces that I, I, I would choose my, my work to, to be in. Mm-hmm. And then it was like um, my, yeah, things kind of dried up. The invitation sort of, they weren't coming, at least not from Europe anymore. Mm. And they sort of slowed down in America. Mm. I know there was still some in, in Europe, but there wasn't that many in America. And then it was like, 
and then I started getting invitations from different places who hadn't heard that you know I was problematic because <laughs> one of the things I would why do, do you, why I was do always going to fight. Do you want to stick to that? etiquette or to that tag you know don't don't, no, don't you know i'm not sticking to it i'm just contextualizing you know, i'm contextual i'm giving you a little bit of historical account of the point when no 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 no, 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 so, no, no wait you never let me finish <laughs> no no wait you're not letting me finish wait 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 i'm not i'm not i'm not sticking to that because because what was interesting about that moment was that i started to make decisions that i wouldn't normally make mm-hmm. and i started going to these incredible places that was complete that were completely off the radar and and i was like I had the most amazing experiences that weren't confined to these, you know, these these the the, the, the monolithic structures of Europe and and, and you know and America, these Western, um, you know, yeah, boxing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, and was like trying to, you know, ha- you know, and, and then when you occupy those spaces, where you also start to get challenged in different ways, the work alters, mm-hmm. and you know, and, and I can't, I can't really, you know, I, I don't want to. Um, I'm kind of deliberately, I think, trying to sort of stay away from the language of generalizing or kind of globalizing my my individual experience as one for for, for all others. I don't know for how successful I'm I'm being with that, but I'm because I'm 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 kind of, I am introspecting quite a bit. And just just to come back to that point of privilege as well. I mean, with at the moment, I mean, I have I have a job. I, I you know I, I I teach at the university. Of course, I you know art is my life. It's not my job, but that's that's my job. And it's like. At the moment, I am also one of the very few people who are privileged to have that, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, oh, oh, Vic. um and um, <laughs> Victoria, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like one of those people that like always. I was like, oh, you know, just know. So, so um, 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 and that's and and that's another type of of of, of privilege that is um that is really disturbing me in a, in mm-hmm. in a sense because. And I, I feel powerless to change whatever else is out there, and that and that's kind of the also the space of of, of art that um, that frustrates me. You know, it's um, yeah, you know, I I think that every every school in in not in this country but just globally needs to have arts education. And because I I live here and this is my home, um, I'm infuriated that. We, you know, you know, in our institutions, we we turn out actors and artists and writers, and they have no space. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they, you know, there's there's no primary schools and high schools that are, unless they're private schools that teach that teach the arts. And this is highly problematic. That's our future audiences. Those mm-hmm. those are our future kind of you know consumers of arts. Those are future patrons. Mm-hmm. You know, those are our future creators. Like we're not nurturing all of this. And why not? I mean, you don't need anything to make art. Mm-hmm. We all have a voice. We can sing. We don't. You know what I mean? We we. Mm-hmm. Why are we so? You know, we, we and it's and it, and it's a it's a. I used to say that apartheid wasn't, you know, wasn't uh, racial warfare; it was spiritual warfare to incarcerate the mind and assassinate mm-hmm. the spirit, mm-hmm. and 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 that's kind of what I feel like. What, what's happened? With, with if you want to ask a question, really uh, put up the question because we cannot scroll up and down the entire feed to find your question, um, uh, and uh, we we are almost uh, to the end of the of the conversation. Um, you know, when you speak like that, when you what you say sends my my mind into you know there is a lot of talk about decolonization and uh, decolonizing this, decolonizing that, and uh, um, I really think that it's not a decolonization program that we need. We need a depollution program because our 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 lands, you know, have been polluted. Uh, Otto puts it in a way that I actually like very much. And, and she says something like, we have allowed people that we should have never allowed access to our lands and to study it and to, to, to own it and to understand it sometimes even the way that we don't understand it anymore. And I think that it is very, it's a very deep, uh, 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 um, statement and and when I talk about deep pollution, for instance, when you refer to art should be taught everywhere, before that rape, you know, uh, uh, art was everywhere, and it was not disconnected to 
the rest of our human activity. And I believe that this is this kind of strength and knowledge and spirituality that we have to reclaim, even in the context of an, an institution like a museum, you know, in a practice, in an individual practice of an artist. And you are doing it extremely well because, for instance, what I'm seeing from your work in the last, let's say, seven years is this very steady, gradual, but very constant shift into a space that, well, you call it shamanism. I call it a space of uh, other knowledge, other, other reality that is... And, and the space of another intuition about in the last... Oh. Um, motherhood? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, game changer. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there was, there's something I, I wanted to, to also kind of mention which is something that I'm that I'm trying to um also just flesh out with more research and understanding. Mm. Um it's this idea of of, of uh and it came in, I call it spirit university like whenever I go into those those journeys and um I, I kind of get schooled, you know, they, these entities stand behind me. Anyway, so one of the things that they said to me was that um you you have, you, you have Essentially, two strands. You got your your DNA, which is your your parents, your grandparents, your you know um, uh, that uh, physical kind of lineage of, of mm-hmm. your being, the current state, when those people manifest. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then you got your your spiritual lineage, which is where your spirit is occupied space and time. Mm-hmm. So you would have been like a grain of sand, who eventually became a little pebble and then a boulder. Uh, can you repeat? Rock, no, can you repeat? I didn't hear. On this, uh, I didn't hear that well. You will be like what? You you like a grain of sand, okay. and then you 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 be, eventually become a pebble, and then a rock, and then a boulder, and then somehow evolve into a plant, and 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 then a tree, and then an insect, and you know as you kind of move up the evolutionary chain in terms of your spirit, you eventually evolve into what is this human human form, you know, which is supposed to be the highest kind of manifestation in mm-hmm. in, in in the space type of thing, and so. Um, so the idea came to me was like, oh, okay, so we have a population explosion apparently, and we have um, mass extinction. So there's this, this kind of no. I mean, we kind of want to think about things. Like, you know, I, I, I kind of part of me refuses to think logically because if I if I think logically, I'm going to succumb to a deep state of trauma and, and depression. And as artists, as a as a cultural practitioner, my my job is not to to simply you know you know be part of 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 logic and 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 the the, the the crisis of normalcy whatever the fuck that is i need to destabilize it mm. and so just kind of thinking of that i was like well so um maybe this also kind of explains certain kind of human behavior we haven't there's some among us who haven't spiritually evolved effectively mm-hmm. in, in that kind of mm-hmm. space mm-hmm. and it kind of makes sense for me and then it kind of expands expands the my 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 understanding or my 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 desire or want to to uh, uh, understanding of what what my space in time is and it's it becomes more kind of universal you know and it, you know and 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 yeah i don't really have any fucking answers for anything i'm just ans- asking questions all the time and sort mm-hmm. of battling for various types of solutions that mm-hmm. you know that that aren't um that aren't prescribed um and you know, I mean, you know, we could go to different spaces to try and understand things. I mean, we've got like monotheism as a as 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 a space. Mm-hmm. Um, but hang on, I think I'm not answering your question. It what doesn't matter. Ask? Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, you know, oh fuck, yeah. I've, oh god, yeah. Uh, anyway, it's yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know because it's also. I, I think in in this this kind of. Unprecedented moment of, of, of thinking, you know, what is this, what is this moment in, 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 in time, like mm-hmm. in the mass of, of time, this extraordinary space of time that we cannot even fathom, like what the fuck is this moment and why the fuck are we all here? Mm. And, um, well, I, I, I think, I, I mean, I feel when I, when I look at my personal kind of uh, journey and uh, we've been within my own sort of understanding and feeling about me 
as a human being and me as a professional body, so to speak, me as a African woman. And uh, uh, I, I really believe that uh, a localization or coming to uh, realize that our, our real purpose to make that journey of life, and we tend to take everything extremely serious, of course, we need to take things seriously, but, yeah, but that, I, 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 but that point. journey, yeah, that journey, yeah, me, that yeah, journey of, of that spiritual journey is 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 paramount. And if you if you never connect to your own spirituality, you 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 lose, you miss something. Yeah, please. Okay, so yeah, I, I was thinking of you know um, how you create villages. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about your purpose and like, I was thinking about that for a while. And I, was, I think I was chatting to Zen about it and um, just this, the space that you will, and I see that happening at, at Mocha as well, like how you recreating that village. And, you know, if, if ultimately if we have to go back to the beginning of a conversation, when we're talking about the divine masculine, the divine feminine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, part of what I've been researching is that this is Africa is the space camp for where, for where this disruption occurred. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I'm like, yeah, this is basically where we're going back to. We're going back to that moment of our divinity in, mm. in, in the space. And, you know, we, because as, you know, as, as African women, we're not just combating, you know, white supremacy. We're also co- combating African patriarchy, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and, and, you know, for, for you to set up that village, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's very much a matriarchal space, mm. which is so rare also within the global art paradigm, mm. you know, and it's, well, it's, thank it's you. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're doing, you're doing. And that's, and that's the thing, you know, it's like a, uh, the, like the resonance. I mean, Storm saying like, I, you know, art changed his life and, 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 it, and, and as a result, he's changed, it's effect to change in others. I mean, I suppose that's all that we can really hope for in a, in a mm. sense, because we, we're not sitting in the seats of government. We're not at the, at the pinnacle of the pyramid. We're not the eye, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it, it's, 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 we're kind of working within these systems in order to kind of twist them. And, you know, and, and, and I think, and I believe it's divine intervention. I, I, the, you know, that's, that's where it comes from. It's, it's another space that's, that's communing, communing with us. And, and to keep those channels open is, yeah. is, is really what, Very what our jobs are. It's definitely Mm. divine. We are down to 20 seconds. Thank you so much, Tracy. It was was wonderful. And it is, uh, I love.